Hey, what's up, guys? So, as you might have seen on YouTube, we have lots of videos on the discrete time convolution, but no video on the discrete time shortcut. So, what I'm going to do is run a quick overview on how to do uh, discrete time convolution in a very easy way. So, this might be very helpful in a test situation or something like that. So, uh, let me just run through a quick overview. Your X event is going to be the input, and the H event is going to be the impulse response function and of course the impulse response function slides through the input in the convolution process to produce the output y of n so the first thing you need to do while doing the short code is converting this graph to numbers so let's start with the x event which is the input so this is a zero put a zero right here this is a one I'll put that right here this is a 2, we'll put that right here, this is another 1, and this is a 0, and we'll put it right here. And then we go to the H event, which is the impulse response function. This is a 2. Make sure this, the first value of the H event function, your impulse response function, is under the second value of your X event function. So this 2 is going to go here. And then we have a zero. We have a zero. And then you have a negative one. And all you do is multiply. So two times zero, zero, two times one, two, two times two, four, two times one, two, two times zero, zero. And we have zeros, you multiply by zero, you have zero, 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 another zero, that's zero, 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 zero. And we have negative one, so you multiply negative one by zero, and that's gonna give you zero. Negative one by one is gonna give you negative one. Negative one by two is gonna give you negative two. Negative one by one is gonna give you negative one. And negative one by zero is gonna give you zero. And then you add. That's going to give you 0, 2, 4, 2, minus 1, minus 2, minus 1, and 0. So this is going to be your y of n function. And remember, just a quick note x of n, your input, convolved with your h of n your impulse response function equal y of n so now if you want to translate this back to your graph all you do is plot your y of n graph which should be something like this i want you to see that your x of n starts from zero right and by doing that we also have to start our y of n from zero so the first value here is zero and we start here zero your second value is two so we translate that to the graph that's two and your next value is four we'll translate that to the graph that should be four and the next one is two translate that here to the graph and that should be two and your next value is negative one translate that down here that's negative one and this is negative 2 translate that down here negative 2 we have negative 1 negative 1 0 0 so this is going to be how your y of n function is going to look like all right let's go to another example so using the knowledge we learned from our last example let's tackle this problem judging from the x of n we're going to have zero right zero zero so we have zero 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 two 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 zero 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 and for the h of n remember i told you to shift it so we have zero 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 we have a zero we have a one we have a two we have a zero 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 
so this is a lot of zeros and what I'm going to do in this case is try to take some zeros out okay we have a fundamental problem right here you see we have lots of zeros and if we multiply the zeros we're just going to fill up the space so we need to like cancel some of these zeros out and in, and in order to understand like what to do I want you I want us to take a look at the first example so as you can see in the first examples we didn't have that many zeros by the size all the zeros we had was this and that one and that was represented here and here going back to the current example we can use the same initiative to solve this so all we need is this zero down here and that zero here and that is translated to this zero and this zero so I'll put a line here I'll put a line here and all we have left is zero two 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 zero and then we have zero 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 one two and going back to the first example we can see that this space was vacant because it was a rule I told you about and let's go back to the current example so we take care of that by taking this zero out because we always need to have that vacant spot and now we multiply so we have zero 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 and multiply by one and then we have zero two 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 zero and multiply by two we have zero four 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 zero and then we add that is going to give you zero 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 two six six four zero and now let's translate that to a graph and like I said from the previous example you start from the x of n you see the x of n starts at x of zero and the y of n also started from zero and for here the x of n first value starts from negative four so our x of n is going to start from negative 4 and go down to 4. So we have 0, 0, 0, 2, 6, 6, 6, 4, 0. Alright guys, that will be the end of this video. And if you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section below. If you want me to make a detailed video on continuous time convolution or discrete time convolution, please let me know in the comment section below or any of the social media like Google Plus or Twitter. I will be available and have a nice day. Peace.